Good morning everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I hope you are well and I hope you are safe. Thank you for joining me on this cooking class. We have been celebrating plants all week here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Yes, I know, celebrating plants, but celebrating it in a way that may not be all too familiar. And one of the things that I have been studying recently is just how important it is to have a very diverse range of bacteria that call you home, that live in your gut. Because when we have a very diverse range of gut bacteria, you have a very healthy gut bacteria. And when your gut is healthy, everything changes. And I'm talking about weight loss, and I'm talking about energy levels and fatigue, whether you have it or not. You know, I am talking about so many amazing things. Your skin's better, your hair's better, you sleep better. Everything changes when your gut is healthy. And one of the best ways that we can support our gut, our gut is to make sure that we are consuming at least, here you go, at least 30 different plant species every single week. 30 different plants. Now I'm not sure whether you've ever taken a look at it and gone, how many plants am I actually eating? But if you did, and I've done this this week, I've kept a note of all the different types of plants that I have, that I consume on a normal basis, and I'm already up to 65 different types of plants. So today's recipe is 100% plant-based. In fact, I think there, I'm just looking at the recipe, and there's like six or seven different plants in this one recipe. So you can see how quickly it can all add up. And all the plants that are in here are obviously good for our gut bacteria. They're good for our body as well because they make us feel good because we're making a pecan caramel slice. Yes, <laughs> I was asked a few, a, few, a few weeks ago now to create a healthy pecan pie. And I thought I can do the flavors, but we're gonna put it into a slice because it's so easy to, to make. And by the way, it's a no-bake recipe. You don't have to do any cooking. How fantastic is it? Yes. All right, let's get into the recipe. Come on down to my bench. See what we have going on here. I'm going to be working straight into my little food processor as per usual. And yes, you will need to have a food processor to get through this recipe because there's a little bit of grinding that's involved. So definitely go with your food processor. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the base of our slice. And as I said, this is no-bake, so I have nothing to... It's great, I have nothing to bake. So let's make the, uh, the base first. So I'm gonna be putting into my everything into my little food processor. I've got 100 grams, which is 3.5 ounces of rolled whole oats. Um, if you want to, you could also make this with quinoa flakes as well, which kind of can be swapped out quite well between the two. If you don't wanna do oats, quinoa are obviously really um, good and high in protein. So you could do quinoa flakes, but there's nothing wrong with oats. Now don't forget, I often get, get asked and people say to me, oh, but oats have gluten. Oats are, are gluten free. So there's something that we all have to remember. Oats on their own are gluten free. The contamination with gluten can sometimes occur when oats are processed in the same factory as say a wheat product. So rye, uh, rye barley or wheat. And when that happens, you can get a little bit of cross contamination. Um, so for anyone who's celiac, you guys already know that you need to um, choose oats that have gluten free on the packet. For the rest of us, the gluten is so minuscule, it's not even worth talking about. Just go with your normal organic or whole oats that you want to purchase. Absolutely fine. So those go on first. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to be putting in a little bit of nut flour. I'm using almond. You could use whatever nut flour you want to use. So we're putting in 50 grams, which is about 1.7 ounces of our nut flour. And if you're thinking, can I add seed flour? 100%, you can use anything that you like. But if you're wondering, can I use another nut instead of pecans? No, you can't, because this is a pecan caramel slice. So if you're allergic to pecans, you can't make this one, because this is, this is what you need. You need pecans, and I'm using raw pecans here, and I'm putting in 100 grams of pecans, which once again, 3.5 ounces of pecans. Let's also put in a pinch of mineral salt, just a little pinch goes in there, and I'm gonna add a little bit of spice to it, of course, to make it a little bit more exciting. And the way I'm making it a little bit more exciting this morning is I'm using a mixed spice. We had the question on our Q&A Friday yesterday, like, can you make your own mixed spice? Because people can't, um, some people have trouble tracking it down. So mixed spice, by the way, is a very common 
um, spice blend in the UK, Australia and New Zealand. We use it quite a lot. It's also known as pudding spice, but if you can't find it, if you're in the US, you could do um, pumpkin spice. We could do any spice, or you could make your own very simply by just having, it's basically a combination of cinnamon, ginger and nutmeg. That's all it is. Now I have put a whole tablespoon in there, which is around about five grams of um, my mixed spice. If you don't have mixed spice, you could get away with cinnamon here. If you've just got cinnamon, so don't, don't panic too much. But mixed spice, definitely, you know, it's got the ginger in there, obviously. It's got nutmeg in there, and it just makes it fabulous. So, lid goes on. Give it a bit of a blend. We're just looking to make a bit of a crumb. All right, you can see that. So it's almost like a crumble topping now, or a, or a crisp topping. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking up some dates i have 75 grams of dried dates here which is about 2.6 ounces of dates the dates are going to help to give it a little bit of sweetness but the dates are also going to help to bind it all together so it's really important that you have a have a dried fruit here that's nice and sticky which dates are and as well as that i'm also going to be adding in two tablespoons of fiber syrup once again the fiber syrup is very necessary to hold everything together and um, as well as that, just a little bit of water. So a tablespoon of water just goes in. This is what's going to help to bind it all because we want we don't want our base to crumble. Obviously, when we slice into it. All right, here we go. Oh, I love it when it gets crunchy. You know, it's doing some good work. Definitely give it a shake, especially if your machine is you know on the small side. Because you want to make sure that the dates are really well combined. And even, even after that very quick little blend, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me have a little look. The, you know the texture is right when you're able to kind of pick it up and squish it all together and it holds its, holds its shape really well. Then you know you've got enough moisture in there. If you think that yours might be a little bit dry, just add a little bit more water. And I'm just talking like a couple teaspoons at a time until it comes to the point where you can actually create a ball from it. So that is the base done. Easy, right? Next thing you need to think about is what you're going to be um, molding your slice into. I am using, this is so cool, this is actually a wooden baking um, tin, would you believe? Now it is fabulous for baking um, things that require very gentle heat, like for instance I always do my Christmas cakes in this water in these wooden boxes because they come out so incredibly well um, but they this is the perfect size for my slice so i have measured it and what you're looking for because you don't want anything too big because then your slice will be really thin you actually want it to you want to be able to see the layers in it so um this particular box is about 25 centimeters in length and about 12 centimeters in width which is 10 inches by 5 inches but you don't want anything too big because like i said you want to be able to get a lovely layering effect from your um from your slice so all you're going to do yes we got a question robin asks should you soak the dates first should you soak the dates first as you can see robin no need to soak the dates absolutely fine if you soak them they're going to get they're going to take in too much moisture and you'll get a soggy slice which you definitely do not want so no no need to soak the dates all right, so we're just going to put the mixture into the base and the whole, obviously the whole thing goes in there. Urgh, give it a bit of a shake out. And once you've got all the base in there, with obviously very clean hands, <laughs> very clean hands, you just kind of want to squish it into place and um, yeah, get in there and create your base. And this is probably one of the, the, the reasons why, a very good example, Robin, of why we don't want to soak our dates because we would be just, it'll just be sludgy and um, that's not going to be very easy to slice or to pick up when you want to eat them. So you want it to be pretty firm. You don't want it to be like rock. You just want it to be nice and firm and you want to squish it down. I'm, I'm using, you know, applying a decent amount of pressure, not too much, but decent enough to make sure that it's nice and even. You don't want it to be lumpy in one side. And what you're looking for is something like that. You see how firm that is in there? And it's not it's not going anywhere so that's what you are definitely after when it comes to this one so nice and squished down let's make the caramel now the caramel is going to be so ridiculously easy to make i'm going to do it all in here i might just give that a bit of a we don't want oats in our in our caramel give it a bit of a wipe out first just to make sure that we've got everything yeah that's clean enough all right so 
Caramel is super easy to make, super, super easy to make. And um, yeah, you're gonna freak out. <laughs> it's so incredibly easy. In fact, it's easier than the base. All right, so all you need for the caramel is, we're gonna go back to our date. So we're doing a date caramel. I've got 200 grams of dates in here, which is 14 ounces. Once again, just dried dates. You could use the real fancy um, medjool dates if you wanted to, 100%, you can totally do that. I've just got some really good organic dried dates, which are just fabulous. So um, 200 grams, 14 ounces, and then we need to add a little bit of liquid. I'm gonna measure the liquid out. So I've just got some water in my jug. And you're after 50 grams, or 50 mils, sorry, of water, which is about 1.7 ounces of water goes in there. I'm also gonna add just a little bit of pure vanilla, half a teaspoon of pure vanilla goes in there as well. And that's kind of it. <laughs> that's the ingredients for the caramel. I know, it's so easy. This is why it's important you have one of these machines because this is gonna do all the work for us now. So, give it a bit of a blend. Oh, and by the way, it makes a mess. I forgot about that. <laughs> this is a good idea to do this because it does, the water does come out. Give it a bit of a wipe down at the same time. <laughs> So I'm listening for what's happening down there. I'll keep that on. And what we're looking for, obviously these are pitted. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> these are pitted. You, know, you don't want pits in it. What I'm looking for, and it may require you to go along with your little plastic spatula and scrape it down. But what you're looking for, and I'm doing everything on high, high beam when it comes to, high speed when it comes to this, you're looking for a change in color when it comes to, and you'll know you've, you've started to create almost like a, a, a whipped date or whipped caramel. So blend away. And scrape. Those are the secrets to making caramel. And you want it to go even lighter than it already is. Like right now I've got a lovely sort of like a date mush. Yes, we have a question. Uh, what machine are you using? What machine am I using? I have, I'm just gonna, I know it's backwards, but can you can you see? It's a Kenwood. And this is a Tri-Blade series Kenwood. It comes with all the bells and whistles, all the attachments, and it is literally my favorite piece of equipment in the kitchen, apart from my oven <laughs> and my air fryer. This is my favorite piece of equipment. I use it pretty much maybe two or three times a day. <laughs> it makes short work of recipes like this I kind of wonder how before these machines existed do we make these kind of recipes by hand it would have taken ages I'm getting there getting there just kind of smooshing it all down Go okay, again Thing about this it's got a plastic sort of rim here which helps to for it to stick to, it doesn't slide along the bench but when you're able you know when you're blending you're able to whack it you know yeah, gent gently whacking it not, not too good and it um just helps to move the stuff inside okay so i'm pretty get pretty happy with that with what we have here we've sort of got a really dark caramel if you want to there is nothing stopping you from whipping it even further and you'll get a really light caramel because you're incorporating air but I'm, I'm pretty happy with what it's looking like now so I'm going to go on to the next step and there's only two steps left and your and your slice is done oh it's so wonderful I'm sorry I'm excited this has become a firm favorite in our house already. So you just want to take it out, obviously take it out of the uh, machine and just dump it on top of the, um, come out of the machine, on top of the base. You don't have to freeze the base or anything like that in advance because it's, the base is really lovely and firm already. So I'm, I'm happy with the base and it's just a matter of getting this out and then kind of smoothing it over top of the base. So you will definitely need um, a plastic spatula for this part because smoothing it out with fingers just means you get, you get dates stuck to your fingers, which is not ideal. 
to get everything out here you can. It's not a lot of caramel that you make or date caramel that you make, but it does go a decent amount of way. So then you just kind of want to smooth it out as much as, as, much as you can. Like I said, use your little plastic spatula. Even wet the tip of it if you want to. That will help stop things from sticking to it. Just a little bit of dampness. And you just want to get it in, make sure you get into all the corners. Sort of see what I'm doing here, getting into all those corners there. And it's just a lovely thin layer of this you know, really simple <laughs> whipped date caramel. And it does taste a little bit like caramel, which is just phenomenal and it's it's what's what I really really like about this recipe is the fact that firstly it's a no bake one but um, you can freeze it so once you've completed it it actually you can you can obviously cut it into portions but it freezes really 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 well so um, there's nothing stopping you from making this in advance and having like you know wonderful pieces of this date um, caramel you know this pecan caramel in the freezer ready for you to just take out when you feel like a little bit of a sweet a sweet treat that is obviously 100% plant-based so right to the edges you want to go wonderful now don't be afraid like I said just to wet the tip of that spatula just a little bit and you will be rewarded with a really really smooth look how smooth that is right that's just with just just by wetting the tip yes we got another question mate uh, stephanie's asked why do some recipes require you to soak the dates first um some recipes require you to soak the dates first hmm depends on the recipe i suppose if it's a really moist recipe like a steamed pudding using dates you definitely want to soak it or, or a sticky date pudding um but this i do not want them to be too firm too soft i want them to be firm otherwise we're not going to be able to slice into it so it's, it's a no-bake one as well, don't forget. So it's not going to harden as it cooks because it's not being cooked. So hence why we're not soaking the dates. But if your recipe says soak the dates, there is a scientific reason behind it. If your recipe say does not say soak the dates, there is also a scientific reason behind it. And remember, baking and cooking is science. And what we're trying to achieve with this one is something sliceable. So we've got two layers now. We're going to finish it off with the last layer. And the last layer, of course... Is pecan so in here in my little um, frying pan here I have a hundred grams of pecan so there's 200 grams of pecans in total in this recipe and you're gonna get between 15 to 18 pieces of slice so it's a, it's a really good um, good size recipe so 100 grams of pecans um, I just pop them into the into my frying pan and pop my frying pan into the oven I uh, set it at 180 degrees which is 350 degrees Fahrenheit and let them just dry roast for about eight to 10 minutes so that they're obviously not burnt, but they're roasted through, which is gonna give another dimension of flavor here. So um, this is quite fabulous. And then you get the opportunity to grab your little hammer. <laughs> Remember, any recipe where I get to use my yellow hammer is a good recipe. I'm just crushing them. If you don't have a hammer, <laughs> not many people have a yellow hammer. Um, this is a coconut hammer actually. This is for opening coconuts. Um, if you don't have a hammer, just pop it into a plastic a little plastic Ziploc bag and then get out your rolling pin and smash it with your rolling pin or you know or a bottle or whatever you have lying around you just want to crush them ah oh, the smell coming off these pecans because they have been lightly roasted in the oven dry roasted it is so good it is delicious and I just saw someone say they really want the recipe do not worry I'm sharing the recipe the PDF version tomorrow um, on Britain's Healthy Kitchen, so you keep an eye out for it. It'll be there for you guys tomorrow. But it's good to know, right? You can you can create something like this that is going to help to boost your the diversity of your gut bacteria. Um, and, and you know you're eating all plants. And it's fabulous. All right, crushed, ready to go. I crushed it. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Easy. Just put them on top. This is, this is the last step. I know, this is the hardest step. No, it's not. This is the easy part. You just pop them on top. The hardest part is stopping at one piece. That really is the hardest part. But I've got to tell you, this is so good with a, you know, a cup of black coffee. We had it 
just like that yesterday and it was amazing. All right, squishing it down, you know, just sort of putting it in place so that the, the pecans kind of, you know, not just sit on top of the caramel, they, they adhere to the caramel because the caramel kind of acts like glue. Um, so just put those on top there and it's a decent amount because this is a pecan caramel slice and you want to taste pecans. So there is no gaps, I'm going to show you guys in a second. There is no gaps here on my top layer. It is all pecans. It is all roasted pecan goodness. Are you ready? Oh, goodness me. This is amazing. Okay, all right. So, see that? It's all pecans, which is exactly what you want. So now, remember, this is no bake. So at this point in time, you can pop this into the fridge and let it harden for a couple of hours, or you can pop it into the freezer for about 30 minutes and then it'll be ready to be sliced. So um, it doesn't need long. It's 30, 30 seconds, 30 minutes in the freezer or 30, uh, a couple hours in the fridge. Um, and then you can slice it up. I would suggest you slice it up with a quite a, a large knife because you want to get really defined slices. So that's why we need to put it in the fridge first because you, or the freezer because you want it to be hard enough so when you do slice into it, you get lovely defined slices. So come on up here. I'm going to show you obviously some that I prepared earlier. So that now is going to go into the fridge. And as I was saying, you can store that in the freezer once it's sliced up, right? Store it in the freezer and then take out a piece, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour before you want to eat it. And it's just fabulous and it's chewy and it's so good. Um, but you can also store it in the fridge and because there's no animal products in there, that's going to last for a while. It's got a really good shelf life. It'll last in a covered container in your fridge, like it's already sliced up. You could have it there for a couple of weeks quite easily, or you could have it for a couple of months in your freezer. This is brilliant. Okay, I'm ready. Here is some that I created earlier. Ta-da, ta-ta. All right. Oh, come closer. I want, to, I want you guys to see the actual layers of the slices. I'm going to pick one up for you to see this. That is so huge. All right, so here we have the wonderful, you can see the layers of the slice. And because I've made it in that smaller tray, you get really gorgeous size from that slice as well. Um, I'm not going to bite into it only because I'm still fasting. I don't even, I'm not going to break my fast, what's the time, for another couple of hours, which is torture. Let me tell you, it is torture. I want to bite into it because it smells amazing. It looks amazing. I want to show you another piece. There's a really good, I saw a really good one here that really defined the wonderful layer. Oh, they're all really good. Doesn't matter. They're all fabulous. But you can see, you can slice them to about that size. By the way, that's a portion. Yeah? That's a portion. Just in case I had to point that out. <laughs> you know, a whole slice is not a portion. That's a portion. And if you're cutting it about that big, you're getting, as I said, between 15 to 18 slices you will be able to get, which is fabulous. But just check. Look at, look at that. It is just an absolute joy. It is a wonder. It goes so nicely as a little treat for you. And yes, remember, I'll be sharing the recipe with you tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen um, if you would like a copy of the PDF. So there you go, my pecan caramel slice. I know slices are popular. I know you guys are going to love this. In fact, don't try not to love it too much because it is really, 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 really good. And it is hard to stock at one piece. But thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed um, you spending time with me in the kitchen as much as I've enjoyed spending time with you guys. I look forward to seeing you all again. And don't forget, one last thing before we go. We are doing a group extended fast starting this Sunday. If you want to join us, starting this Sunday, over on our private page, Bridget's Healthy Kitchen Family, we're doing another group extended fast, which is probably really needed after the caramel pecan slice, right? It's good. It's like, oh, I'm going to do it. We're starting on Sunday if you want to join us head over to Bridget's Healthy Kitchen family our private support page and you can find out all the information you need there all right guys take care and I look forward to seeing you again back in the kitchen bye